Good morning, Save Toys family. Um, just uh, want to share something today the Lord shared with me. Um, because Save Toys is about, not only do we want people to get saved, we do. You, you can't disciple children that aren't born. So we want you to be born again. We want you to be saved. We want you to trust in Jesus. But that's the beginning of a journey. Um, I feel like there's so many Christians that just don't know the truth and are still in bondage and still in fear. Hey, I've been one, I'm still am at times. Um, and I just had something I want to share with you that I, I hope, like, I heard like Kirk Franklin say, when I hear some pain medicine, I hope this is some pain medicine because I want God's people to be free and to grow and to know God is their best friend. I want, I want uh, Christians to realize, you know, we. It's really prevalent in the church. It's prevalent everywhere in the American society, but it's really prevalent in the church where um, we, we're we so concerned about who gets in the White House. Man, if so-and-so's got to get in the White House, whether what side of the fence you're on, and they'll take care of us. Well, you know, if you read in Samuel, um, God instituted governance, not government. He was going to be their God, and they would be his people. And he warned Samuel, those guys, don't, they don't take care of you. They're, they're, now, there's been some godly ones especially in Israel, uh, that have sought to be leaders like God would want them to be leaders. My point is that that's just chasing a rabbit that don't need to be chased. My point is, one of the things we want for saved toys is for Christians to realize their provision comes from the Lord. Um, and with that, I want to talk about a little sermonette, anything that, that I just basically hope is some pain medicine. I hope it helps. But, you know, just because you get saved does not mean you don't struggle with sin. And it, it's unfortunate that Christians don't understand that. We get this because we want to turn a relationship with God into a religion. If you struggle with sin, well, you just need to get resaved, which I don't believe you can do, according to Second Peter 2. Um... Or you've lost your salvation. Again, not true according to Second Peter two. And if you believe that, the enemy will use that against you to keep you from running to his throne. Remember, the Bible says that God's throne is a throne of grace, not a throne of war, not a throne of anger. He poured that out on Jesus. Um. And the reason why this is so important for what I'm about to say is if you believe his throne is a throne of anger, when you sin, you won't run toward him and seek his help to overcome the sin. You'll run away from him. And the only other place to run into is bondage. Um, one of the ways the Lord is, and again, you will never hear him say, I've not overcome sin, like I'm perfect. But he has gotten me out of some bondages. And by the way, being out of bondage does not mean you don't still struggle with it. It just means you struggle with it from a different angle. But I was thinking about the scripture on Psalms 34, 8. Oh, taste and see the Lord is good. And one of the ways, and I hope this helps, because I'm not trying to shine a light on me, because I still struggle. I still need my daddy to pull me out. But one of the things that's helped me is to admit, God, that I have a sinful taste. One of my biggest ones is fear. You know, you got to have a taste for fear. And if you struggle with fear, you know the feeling every now and then you have a really good night. And sometimes it's, it's like, wow, is it something I should be afraid of? You know, because when you have a taste for something that's not godly, when you start getting out of that, or have moments when the Lord's sparing you of that, then it feels almost creepily uncomfortable because you're so used to it. Remember, Jesus told a guy uh, one time, if you if you want to be well, you can be healed. You know, maybe he had gotten comfortable in his affliction. But one of the things that helped me is, oh, taste and see the Lord is good. When he started giving me new taste, you say, well, how do I do that? Well, you got to be honest with him about the old taste. If you struggle with fear, Lord, I need a taste for peace and joy. 
I need more than just quote scriptures. This the day the Lord has made, I already rejoice and be glad. And I need to do more than quote. I need to taste and love those verses. Yes, quote those verses. But I mean, you can treat the Bible like a spell book, just like the pagans do. If you have a taste for lust, well, if you feel like you lose your salvation every time you fall to that, you know, when you need God the most, you deserve him the least, you'll run from him. You should be running towards him. And the only way you can do that is repentance and with just knowing that he wants you and honesty. Lord, I have a taste for this. If you have a taste for gossip, you know, you may not be able to stop people from coming to you. Like you say, well, the cure for gossip is, no, no I will not hear that. Don't talk to me like that. Um, I don't think that's realistic. I think you end up hurting things more looking like a jerk. Now you can avoid it and things like that. I'm, I mean, like if you can, like, you know, hey, I'd prefer not to talk about the situation, but I'm saying, here, here's my what I'm trying to say. If you, if you ask God to give you new taste, maybe when you hear stuff about some people, instead of turning that into gossip and going forward with it, maybe you can have a new taste. God, this is a need and they need help and I know you're the helper of that need. So-and-so is going through that, I heard, Lord. And instead of passing that on to my next friend, I want to take the information I got and my taste is for you, my, my new taste is for healing and a miracle versus a taste for being in the know. Look, I know that you're still gonna struggle with sin to the day you put your head on a satin pillow or get raptured. Doesn't mean you can't be delivered. You know, uh, a soldier that's been in combat when they come back in the United States doesn't mean they never deal with people that didn't like them or disagree with them or bad people or or bad flashbacks of, of, of what they saw in combat. But it doesn't mean they're away from where they were. But what you have to do is be honest with God with whatever your struggle is. If it's pride, you know, I taste myself and love how I look and feel. Um, or give me a new taste of humility and the, the blessings that go along with being humble before you. I just want to help. I think sometimes we as Christians, we get saved and then we stop. And, and we don't under, answer these questions that need to be answered. And what's going to happen is you're going to spend your whole life with your pastor's number on student dial. With senior saints numbers. And by the way, that is not wrong to see them. With multitude of counseling, there is safety. The heart of a pastor is to help his his, his flock. Well, it's not his flock. He's the under-shepherd. God's the, the shepherd. But the Bible is very clearly, he is the shepherd. But... They're the heart of the under shepherd, the pastor is to see his flock grow. The heart of a senior saint is to guide the younger ones. And the Bible talks a lot about that. That's great. But what I'm saying is I want you to also get the point. We're not in pride, but you become the senior saint where you grow so you can help someone else so that you can know how to shut the doors and, and call out to your God. Where you understand the scriptures that you know how to dig and look and hunt for verses that will help you out in that time of need. That you can have that one-on-one -on -one best friend relationship with God. And guess what? It's not going to be marked with perfection. His part of the friendship will be marked with perfection. But he's also going to mark it with grace. So I really hope this helps people. That's all I want. Love in Christ. If you like it, collect it.